Hello, Math 7 students. This is Open Up Resources, Unit 2, Lesson 10, Introducing Graphs of Proportional Relationships. This is video one. It will take two videos to complete this lesson. To get started, this is a quick review of graphing. You have these five points that you need to plot here on this grid. I want you to get started on this and then come back to check your answers. Okay, let's see how you did. To get started, we have a few reminders. We have a point 0, 10, and we need to remember that whenever I have a pair of coordinates, they're listed as an x, y. A great way to remember this is what's the alphabet? When you sing the alphabet song, you hear x, y, and z. So which comes first? The x. Okay, so x, y, which means that this is the x value of 0 and a y value of 10. But that doesn't do any good if you don't know what the graph looks like. And the graph, we have two axes. This axis is called what? x. And this axis is called the y. So again, I think of the alphabet to know x comes before y. But how do I know which one is the x and which one is the y here? And the way I think about this is when you're a little tiny baby, you have to learn to crawl before you can learn to climb. So when you're a little tiny baby, you're on the floor crawling, right? And when you're crawling, which way do you go? It's a perfect baby. Hush. It's a perfect baby. There, I got some knees and some legs. When you are a baby and you crawl, which way do you crawl? You can only go left and right, right? You're going horizontally. But then when you're a little bit older, that's when you learn how to climb the stairs and you learn how to go. I don't know how to draw a climbing person. <laughs> That's a climbing person? Oh, looks like a kangaroo. I don't even know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not drawing a climbing person. But you have to learn how to crawl going side to side. And then when you're older, that's when you can go and climb and go up and down things. So that's how I remember X first, meaning we're crawling, and Y first, meaning we're climbing. So 0, 10 is over 0 and then up 10. Do you see why I had you do it in pencil? How many of you made mistakes? <laughs> and then you second guessed yourself and then did it wrong? Okay, so continuing on, we have 1, 8. That means I'm going to go over first because I crawl over first, and then I can climb up to the 8. 2, 6 would mean I'm going over 2, crawling over 2, and then after I've crawled over 2, then I can grow up and climb up to 6. 3, 4. Over 3. Up 4. And 4, 2. Over 4, and then up 2. Okay. What do you notice about the graph? Talk with your groups. What do you notice? We've got these points. What do you notice? Okay, tell me some things that you noticed. Thank you for getting us started. Hayden. Yeah, there are negative numbers here on the bottom. So you didn't notice anything particularly about the points, but just the whole entire graph, you can see we've got positive numbers. And then we go backwards, we end up with some negative numbers. Good observation. Uh, what did you notice, Miley? Yes, and I'm going to introduce a new word now that you've said that. That word is linear. What do you think linear means? Really? You don't think it means a line? Do you see the word line in the word linear? Do you see the word diagonal in the word linear? <laughs> so what do you think linear means? It means a line. And it's silly because a line is a straight line. But sometimes we use the word line to refer to anything. So we are going to emphasize linear means it's a nice straight line. 
not a nice straight diagonal, but a nice straight line. So linear means a nice straight line. Um, it is going diagonal. And let's talk about that diagonalness in a second. Jada, what do you notice? Exactly, and we can describe this um, looking at that diagonalness. Like every time I'm going over one, oh, let me pick a different color. Where, what color have I not used? I've used them all. I use blue. I know, but I have to, I don't have a pink on my tablet, so I have to go and find it in here in the color wheel. Okay, every time I go over one, how much am I going down? I'm going down two. Every time? Over one, so I go down two. Over one and down two. It does now. Over one. Down two. Make a prediction then. If this pattern continues, if I go over one and down two, what's another coordinate going to be that should belong on here? See if you can work backwards and write the coordinates. Here's the point. Coordinates would be what? Chandon. Very good. Over five and up zero. Okay, let's move on. As you can see, this whole lesson is going to be about graphs of proportional relationships. So we need to practice this graphing skill, which we've done, and now let's tie it in together. It says some t-shirts cost $8 each. So here's a table. What does the X represent? Because we can see these labels, X and Y. What does the Y represent? And then, is there a proportional relationship between X and Y? Talk with your groups to answer those three questions. We'll come back together in about 60 seconds. Online learners, pause the video. What does X represent? Looking at that table, we can see they're labeled. What does that X represent for this situation? Emma? The amount of t-shirts, beautiful. X represents the number of t-shirts. So what does the Y column represent, Stephen? The cost of the t-shirts, perfect. So is it proportional? Can we look at this table and see if it's proportional? What are we looking for? How do we know if it's proportional? Jada? Beautiful. We ask, we see the one. How does the one change to an eight? We times eight. And we see if it works every single time. And does it? Yep. Two times eight is 16. Three times eight is 24. Even down here, six times eight is 48. True or false? True. So is it proportional? Yes. And to prove it, we can even say, yes, the constant of proportionality is eight. So guess what you're doing now? You're going to plot those points. Yep. Not just look at it. You're going to make it. Uh, okay. Let's make sure we understand what's happening. First of all, this is X. What did we decide X represents? T-shirts. So in addition to labeling this x-axis x, we should also label it t-shirts. Add that extra label. And in addition to labeling this y, we should call it cost. And now I'm a little bit puzzled because I need to plot this point 1, 8. So this is the x value of 1, y value of 8. So as a pair of coordinates, that would be the point 1, 8. So this whole table is a bunch of pairs of coordinates, 1, 8, 2, 16, etc. Where would 1, 8 be? Because I don't see an 8, I just see a 10. Where am I going to figure out where the 8 is? It's not possible, right? No. Miley? It's hard for me to see what you're describing. So you're, you're maybe right, you're maybe not, I can't tell. But let's talk about it at the as um, a class up here. Since this is the 10, where would the 8 be? Notice 
that this amount right here is 10, which would mean I'd have the amounts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 all in between here. I'd even have the numbers 1 half and 1 third and 1 fourth and 2 and a half, and all of that would have to fit in here. But you can see that here is the 10, but 10 is broken up into how many pieces? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pieces. So if 10 is broken up into 5 pieces, that means each one of these little lines is representing what amount? 2. So this is 2, which means this one is going to be 4, and this is going to be, and this is going to be. And now you understand why they didn't label every single line, right? Because it gets to be really, really squishy, and it gets to be a lot of work. But can we now figure out where 1, 8 is? Yeah, over 1 and up, 8. So even this next one, even though there isn't a 16 labeled on the axis, can we figure out where 16 would be? Yes, because we go over 2 and up 16. Here's 10, 12, 14, and 16. Continue on. Graph all those points. And again, same type of thing. What do you notice about this graph? Finish that with your groups. And I will be doing it on the video, but I won't be talking. Check your graph against mine. Let's see if they match. Uh-oh, I think I made a mistake here. Yep, 30, 32. That should be where that point is. Okay, talk with your groups. What do you notice? What do you notice about this graph? And now come back to me. What do you guys notice about the graph now that you've discussed with your groups? What do you notice about the graph? Trinity. Uh, yes, we can see that the actual axis is counting by twos instead of counting by ones. Good. So we've got a different axis here or a different scale. What else do you notice? Uh, Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, so what do we call that? We learned that word in our last example. We call that linear, <laughs> not linear. Nice try, but you guys got the idea. This is linear, which means once again that it's a straight line. All right, linear, it's a nice straight line. Anything else that you notice? CJ. Again, we can see some steps, right? That every time I go over one, this time I'm going up how much? Two, four, six, eight. I'm going over one. We might be counting boxes, and this would be one, two, three, four little boxes, but really each one of these lines, remember, is worth two. So two, four, six, eight. Great thing to notice. I like this one, and this is one that I really want to focus on. This is linear, okay? Um, but there's something special about these ones that are linear. And I want you guys to get out the rulers and use them in this way. A great way to always test if something is linear is to see if it can be lined up. For example, I'm going to draw a line that goes through each of these points. Does one single line go through all of those points? Yeah, so it's linear. However, even though I've used my ruler to do that, don't draw that line on your paper. Just use the ruler, see if they all line up. Do they? Okay, yeah. here's the reason why I don't want you to use the ruler to actually draw the line, just to see if they line up. I need eyes on the screen right now because I'm about to tell you something really important. When we draw a line, it means every single point on that line is possible. Like this one, it's possible to buy one shirt and have it cost $8. And it's possible to buy two shirts and have it cost $16 and three shirts for $24. And all of those are possibilities. But that line means even these ones are possibilities, like over two and a quarter or two and a half and up that amount. Can you buy two and a half t-shirts 
No. What about half of a t-shirt? Can you go and buy half of a t-shirt? Or what about one-tenth of a t-shirt? Is that going to work, that one-tenth of a t-shirt? No. And so we, that's why we have to be careful about drawing that line, because that line does mean everything on that line is possible. And since everything on the line is not possible, I don't want to draw the line, but I do want to observe using my ruler that it is linear and they all fit on the line. Okay, there are going to be some situations where it is going to be okay to draw the line. But on this particular one where we're buying individual t-shirts, we don't want to draw that line. And now we're ready for our matching tables and graphs sorting activity. And for you online learners, that's going to look a little bit different than it does for these in-person students. So if you're learning online, um, you will find everything that you need in ca the Canvas lesson. So here is that Canvas lesson. You're going to scroll down to where we're at in this particular part of the lesson, and it says your teacher will give you paper showing tables and graphs. Since I'm not there to give you those papers, we're going to do it using this PowerPoint. It's going to allow you to do it digitally. So here's how this is going to work. Um, this is a read-only copy. So when you click on this link, it is going to open up a PowerPoint, um, and it's not going to let you do anything to it. It's because I want you to save it to your own drive or your own computer um, so that any changes you make, it won't be visible to the other students. So here's how this works. What I'm going to do to open this and model for you, I have to click on Open Incognito. Um, that way it acts like I'm a student who's not logged into my own personal account. You guys, you'll just click on the link and it will open. But when I click on this link and it opens Incognito, it looks like this, and it does give me this PowerPoint, and it reminds me this is a read-only, you don't have permission to edit this. So what I need to do is I need to go File, and download as. That's going to allow me to have a copy on my own computer that, or you to download. You can have a copy on your own computer and my copy won't be affected. So we're going to download and we are going to download a copy. If you choose any of these others, it's not going to allow you to edit it and we do need to be able to edit this. So download a copy. Um, and then it's just going to let you know that it's ready to download. It should show up somewhere here. If you're on a Mac, it would show up somewhere in this corner uh, where it, the downloads actually appear. But now I'm going to actually open that up. Um, it could possibly open in the actual PowerPoint if you have that available to you. Um, it might open up in the online version again. And students of Scholar Academy, you guys do have access to PowerPoint through your Microsoft 365. So as long as you're logged in, you shouldn't have any trouble doing this. Now that I have this open, um, I need to click on Enable Editing. And you can see I've got these slides down here. You can kind of see what's going on down here, but don't actually click on those slides because you can see it says don't scroll past this page until you're told to do so. So I want you to stop on each page doing the specific things that I'm asking, and then I will give you a specific time when I want you to scroll past because these are where the answers are, and I don't want you to look ahead to the answers. So here's how we get that sorting document open, and now here is what I expect you to do. <clears throat> All right. Um, it says, examine the graphs closely. What is the same and what is different about each graph? So I'm looking right here at these graphs. I'm not looking anywhere else. On the next page, we do have tables, but we're not worried about the tables right now. We're looking just at these graphs. Here's all 10 of them. And I just want you to take a look and see, is there anything similar? Is there anything different? What are some things that you notice? Pause the video, taking a look at your own graphs to see things that you might notice. And now I hope that some things that you noticed are some of them are, remember that word that we were using, some of them are linear, but some aren't. So not all are linear. In class, students called it wonky. Some are linear, some are wonky because they're just not linear. Um, some other things that students noticed, uh, they noticed that they're not always necessarily consistent. For example, here I have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and here I have a 1, 2, no 3. I have a 4, 5, no 6. Here I have a 10, but no 15. I have a 20 and 25, but no 30 and 35. Um, so we're just seeing a couple of weird, interesting things. Now we're ready to sort. The next part of what we are supposed to do is 
take turns with your partner to match a table with a graph. This part here we're going to skip. We're going to skip to this next part. It says take turns with the partner. You're going to have to do it on your own, but you're going to be taking a table and trying to figure out what uh, graph that table belongs to. So here's how this is going to look using your document. We've got all of these tables here, and I am just going to pick one. I'm going to control X or cut it, and then I'm going to come over here to this page and control V or paste it. Ooh, I want it to be pasted as an image. There we go. And so then I'm looking here and I can see 1, 10, 2, 15, 3, 25. So here, this is 1, 10. I should go over 1 and up 10. This one goes over 1, up 8. So it's not that one. Over 1, up 10, but this one goes over 1, up a little bit less than 10. So I'm going to keep looking over 1. Oh, that one goes over 10. So it's not that one. Over 1, up. Well, definitely not that one. That one doesn't go up to 10. Keep looking. Over 1, up 2. Not that one. Over 1, up less than 10. Going to keep looking. Surely it'll be here somewhere. Um, over 10, up 0.5, or 5, that's not it. Over 1, up 10, ooh, I think I found a match. So let's take a look. Over 1, up 10, we have over 1, up 10. Over 2, up 15, that's exactly what we see there. Over 3, up 25, over 3, up, yep, 25. Over 4, up 30, over 4, up 30. Yep, looks like I found my match. So now I know that 1 and H are paired together. And that's all that you're going to do. Now that 1 and H are paired together, I know that I don't need to worry about looking at H anymore. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to take this next one. There's number 2. I'm going to paste it on over here and see if I can match up and figure out which one that graph goes with. And as I'm trying to match it up, and if you're trying to figure out you know, what these points actually are, you can always change the size of these images. I kept them small so that they would all fit on that screen in that document. But if I wanted to blow this one up to see those numbers a little bit better, like when I was reading through, I couldn't tell if it was a 5.0 or a 50. So I'm just going to grab this corner, and, be and I'm able to just expand that, make it a little bit bigger. Now I can maybe see those numbers a little bit easier. And then when I'm done looking at it and can see, oh, it is a 50, not a 5.0, um, then I can always just kind of control Z to get it back into place and get it to be that right size. Um, so just a few tricks on how to uh, use that PowerPoint document to be able to do the sorting activity. Um, I want you to pause the video while you work on your own sorting activity, um, trying to pair up these tables with all of these graphs. Pause the video until that's all done. Okay, and now that you are done with that sort, now it's time to actually scroll past this page because when we scroll past this page, it's going to have all of the answers. So you can scroll past the page in your own PowerPoint document or you can just watch the video and you can see 1 and H belong together just like we saw. 2 and B are paired together. 3 and G are paired together. 4 and D are paired together. 5 and A, and the rest of them are over here on this next page, 6 and E match together, 7 and F, 8 and I, 9 and C, and 10 and J. I'm going to come on back over here and write all of those down. I'm going to write them down right here where it says to um, explain or match each of those. We have one paired with H, two and B, three and G, four and D, five and A, six and E, seven and F, eight and I, nine and C, and ten and J. It says pause here so you can we can review work. We've already reviewed it together, so we're good to move on. Uh, we're also actually going to be skipping some of these other steps. Skipping, skipping, and now I want you to answer this question, which of these relationships are proportional? Let's come on back here. Oh, sorry, I need to go to our PowerPoint actually. So we have each of these five on this screen and the remaining five on this screen, I want you to go through and figure out which ones are proportional. 
So I'm going to, you're going to be doing it on your PowerPoint document. And I'm going to return over here and model it on this screen. So we're trying to figure out if they're proportional or not. We don't know how to tell by looking at a graph if it's proportional, but we've got lots of experience looking at a table to see if it's proportional. And so we just ask, how does a 1 change to a 10? We know that one, we don't have to work backwards. 1 times 10 is 10. So if it's proportional, I should be able to multiply everything by 10. 2 times 10, does it give me 15? It does not. And we can even look further. 3 times 10, does it give me 25? Again, it does not. So this one would be categorized as not proportional. Let's take a look at the next one. This one should look very familiar to you. Uh, T-shirts cost $8 each. We saw that one for one of our starter problems. How does a 1 change to an 8? We multiply by 8. How does a 2 change to a 16? We multiply by 8. And 4 multiplied by 8 is 32. So we are able to multiply by 8 everywhere on that table. So this one is proportional. And I want you to continue on categorizing each one of these by looking at the table on are they proportional or not. No need to write equations, but I just want you to find out are they proportional. Pause the video long enough to get that done. When we return, we'll take a look at the answer key. Okay, let's take a look. Returning to the PowerPoint document, if you scroll past this page, you will see those answers categorized proportional and non-proportional. So let's take a look at that. <clears throat> Here's our proportional relationships. I have two, uh, 2B, 7F, 4D, 8I, and 9C, it looks like, 9C there. How did you do? Just to confirm, we already know that this one, we're multiplying by 8. This one here, 1 times 1.6 is 1.6, and we can see that the constant proportionality is 1.6, going all the way across. 2 multiplied by 4 is 8, 3 times 4 is 12, 6 multiplied by 4 is 24, so constant proportionality is 4. Here, 1 times 1 third is 1 third, 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds, and 3 times 1 third is 1. Continuing on, we can see that that constant of proportionality for that table is 1 third. And how does a 10 change to a 15 hundredths? We may have needed to use our calculator for that one. And it's late in the day, so I actually do need to use my calculator for that one too. I'm working backwards. It looks like we are multiplying by 15 thousandths, or 0 0.015. And 20 times that same number, sure enough, it gives me that 0.3 or 0 0.30 that we see in the table. So the constant of proportionality here is 0 0.015. These are our proportional relationships. These ones are the non-proportional relationships. So non-proportional, we had 6 and E, G3. 1H, 5A, and 10J. We are going to continue to play around with this, but we're going to save it for the next video. Uh, we will return to this PowerPoint, so just make sure you have it saved safely in your computer so that we can return to it, um, and it'll save you a bit of work um, for our next video. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.